Anyone born between 1980 and the early 2000s can recall seeing Got Milk ads everywhere they looked. From the TV commercials to those iconic milk mustache ads, Got Milk was plastered everywhere our eyes could look. The classic slogan is one of the most famous and memorable marketing campaigns of all time. A study found that 90% of people could recall the slogan when asked about it. Not only can we remember the slogan, but the slogan made us buy more milk too. The milk industry saved an estimated 200 155 million dollars all thanks due to the success of the got milk campaign but did that success last do we still drink more milk because of those two iconic words today i'm deep diving into the entire story of got milk and revealing how effective the campaign actually was the results are very surprising but first we need to go back to where it all started The Got Milk story starts in June of 1993 with the California Milk Processor Board, or CMPB. The CMPB included all of the milk processing companies in California, and they came together with one goal in mind to sell more milk. At the time, milk sales had been declining while soda sales were skyrocketing. Aggressive marketing campaigns from companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi positioned soda as fun to consume, offering caffeinated energy with enticing packaging. Milk, in contrast, was plodding along in plastic or cardboard containers. If there was any carton design at all, it was typically a simple illustration of a cow. Milk needed to fight back before it was too late. So, all of the companies in the CMPB agreed to chip in three cents for every gallon of milk they sold to fund a marketing campaign to get consumers to drink more milk. The fund was $23 million, which was around the same amount of money that the most prominent auto, beer, finance, and pharmaceutical brands had for their marketing budgets. After the CMPB created the fund, they hired a man named Jeff Manning to use the fund to develop the campaign. He hired San Francisco ad agency Goodbye, Silverstein, and Partners, or GSP, to help him out. And through their collaborative research, they discovered something monumental that would play a huge role in their campaign. In 1993, a man named John Steele, a partner of GSP, held a focus group where he asked respondents to not consume milk for a week before participating in the study. When the respondents showed up, they were anxious about being deprived of the household staple. It became clear from others' testimonials that consumers felt an emotional connection to an everyday product. John had a hunch he was onto something huge. After John relayed the results from the focus group to Jeff Goodbye and Rich Silverstein, they held a meeting to plan the next steps. A colleague, Tara Winkler, asked Jeff Goodbye what he'd like to call that part of the meeting. Goodbye recalls saying, I don't know, it's about running out of milk. Why don't we call it Got Milk? Winkler scribbled those words, question mark included, on a piece of foam core that hung on a wall. And the slogan stuck. They decided to go with Got Milk as their official slogan for their brand new marketing campaign. These early brainstorming sessions planted the seeds of the Got Milk campaign's genius approach deprivation marketing. Instead of selling the product to consumers, Jeff Manning and GSP would sell the lack of a product, in this case, milk. They decided to put their focus group findings into action right in their office. Rich Silverstein emptied the milk cartons from the firm's refrigerator and installed a hidden camera at its back. He wanted to capture people's responses to finding themselves without milk to pour into their morning coffees. The employees fumbled around the kitchen in frustration, which provided Jeff and GSP with concrete evidence to present to the CMPB. The CMPB loved the idea, and thus, the Got Milk campaign was born. They didn't know it at the time, but the CMPB had one of the most famous marketing campaigns of all time right in the palms of their hands. There are two different types of ads that the CMPB ran that made Got Milk a household slogan. Their iconic TV ads and their more iconic milk mustache print ads. I will cover the print ads later in the video, so let's start with their TV commercials. Between 1993 and 2014, they ran 70 unique TV ads, some of which won awards for how amazing they were. For the sake of time, I'll be covering the two most iconic ads they ran, starting with their first ever commercial called Aaron Burr. This ad was released in October of 1993. It takes place in a warehouse turned into a private museum, housing a history buff's collection of artifacts revolving around the Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton duel. The history buff spreads peanut butter on a piece of bread while listening to classical music on the radio. Ah, 
And that was the Vienna Wood Dance in D, one of my all-time favorites. At the end of the music, the radio host announces a $10,000 contest in which he will make a random call and ask the question, who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? The man bites off half his folded sandwich in a single mouthful and knowingly looks around his museum, hearing the gunshot as he looks at the guns used in the duel. The history buff's phone rings and he interrupts the announcer mid-question, answering correctly by naming Aaron Burr. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Mm -hmm. Hello, for $10,000. However, his answer is unintelligible because of the peanut butter sandwich in his mouth. He quickly tries to wash the sandwich down with some milk, but as he goes to pour a glass, he is horrified to discover that his milk carton has only a drop left. Excuse me? With only a few seconds left, he tries to repeat the answer, but the announcer cannot understand him and hangs up. I'm afraid your time is almost up. I'm sorry, maybe next time. Fun fact, that commercial was directed by the one and only Michael Bay, believe it or not. Anyway, the second ad is called Heaven, which was released in 1995. A cruel businessman gets hit by a truck seconds after insulting someone over the phone and seemingly ends up in, quote, eternity. Tom, can I make a suggestion? You're fired! <laughs> <laughs> Eternity. The room is all white, decorated with white flowers and white animals. He discovers a plate of cookies that are the size of boulders. He munches one of the cookies and concludes that he is in heaven. Heaven! <laughs> he proceeds to find a giant fridge full of milk cartons and tries to take a sip of one. However, it's empty, and he soon realizes that every single one of them is empty. He then says, Wait a minute. Where am I? The commercial ends with the classic Got Milk logo engulfed in flames. As I said, the CMPB ran dozens of these types of ads, but they all had one underlining theme to them, the frustration of not having milk when you need it most. And while these TV ads were great and super effective, no one remembers anything more than those iconic print ads of celebrities with milk mustaches. In 1995, two years after the Got Milk campaign launched, Jeff Manning had an idea that would change the campaign forever. His idea was to license the Got Milk slogan for free to companies who were interested in using the slogan to promote their own products. The CMPB liked the idea, and soon after, Jeff landed massive companies like Oreo, Girl Scout Cookies, and Mattel, the company behind Barbies. These deals were huge for the campaign, but nothing impacted it more than their deal with Milk Pep. The Milk Processor Education program, or Milk Pep, is a national group for all the milk processors in the US. In 1995, they decided it was time to do some messaging of its own. The group hired the agency Bazo, which dreamed up what became known as the Milk Mustache Campaign, a nationwide effort to make milk more interesting and to emphasize its wholesomeness. The first ever Milk Mustache ad featured Naomi Campbell and had the tagline, Milk, what a surprise. A handful of their first ads would have the same tagline. But soon after, Milk Pep made a licensing agreement with GSP to use their wildly popular slogan. Milk Pep didn't know it, but they had just made the best decision ever to use Got Milk in their ads. A grand total of 350 milk mustache ads ran between 1995 and 2014. These ads featured every type of celebrity, from actors to actresses, sports stars, fictional characters, and politicians. Angelina Jolie, Ben Roethlisberger, Chris Paul, The Cookie Monster, David Beckham, Demi Lovato, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and more were featured, just to name a few. These print ads were super effective at grabbing the reader's attention. Seeing their favorite celebrity excited them, and with said celebrity right next to the guy milk slogan and made them want to drink milk or at least that's what milk pep thought but more on that later in the video what's crazy was that milk pep was only paying twenty five thousand dollars per ad a fraction of what these stars normally charge for commercials the celebrities didn't do it for the money rather they genuinely wanted to be in these ads i assume they did them for the pop culture aspect of it but they also seemed to want to spread the campaign's message for example nba star dwight howard saw the connection between his childhood dreams and the campaign's inclusive properties he said it's a very simple yet engaging message 
message with an inherent call to action. The execution leveraged well-known athletes that were larger than life or heroes for all kinds of people. It's impressive for a marketing campaign to be remembered decades after it started, but did the ads actually work? I mean, did consumers actually drink more milk after seeing these ads? The answer is actually really surprising. In short, the Got Milk campaign did increase milk sales, but only for a year. In 1994, just one year after the campaign launched, 755 million gallons were sold in California up from 740 million gallons in 1993. Jeff Manning also cited figures that indicated Got Milk helped halt a slide that could have cost the industry $255 million annually in California alone. That seems like a good return on investment, but overall, it was tough for Milk to regain some of the lost loyalty it had enjoyed in the 1950s. Between 1970 and 2011, average consumption went from 0.96 cups daily to 0.59 cups. Milk consumption had declined nationally from 28. 6 gallons to 20.9 gallons in the same time frame. But how could such a memorable campaign not cause an increase in sales? On any given day, an estimated 80% of all US consumers came into contact with Got Milk. There are two answers to that question, the first of which is that the habits of consumers simply just change throughout the years. White milk just doesn't play the role it used to play in American households. Fewer people are eating cereal for breakfast, instead they're looking for yogurt or other low calorie options. Also, milk now competes with alternatives like oat milk, Milk, coconut milk, and almond milk. Getting people to increase their milk consumption is harder than ever, so it's hard to blame Got Milk for not increasing sales. The other answer is that people were too focused on the celebrities in the ads and weren't taking away the ad's message. Seeing their favorite celebrities intrigued them, but seeing them didn't motivate them to buy more milk. All they were doing was waiting to see who the next Got Milk celebrity was, which took the attention off the ad's message. But despite the lack of its effectiveness, the Got Milk campaign is still one of the most famous marketing campaigns to ever exist. The fact the fact that we all remember the slogan to this day proves that the campaign worked flawlessly.